Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of bbfohio.com as we begin a two-part study in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7 titled, Karma versus Scripture. In this day of apostasy, there is a famine of the hearing of the words of God as predicted by the prophet in Amos 8.11. This has resulted in a dumbing down of the sheep and an all-time low level of spiritual discernment. And this low level of spiritual discernment is not seen any better than in the Christian adoption of satanic practices in things like soaking prayer, Lectio Divina, centering prayer, yoga, and the claim that the Bible actually teaches things like karma, and the claim of I am as our own divine name, also used in chanting and in prayer. In this message, we will present the truth about karma and why it is a, actually a complete perversion of the biblical truth of reaping and sowing. But before we go to our message, I'd like to say a word and dedicate this message to my good friend and brother in Christ who departed from Frisco, Texas this past Saturday, January 16th, and went to be with the Lord Jesus. Brother Ron was one of our prayer warriors and a great supporter of this ministry, but he was also a good friend and a constant source of encouragement and love to this preacher. If America had more men like Ron Myers, America would still be the great nation that it once was. But Ron was, first and foremost, a citizen of heaven who stored his treasures there. And he is now with the most important person in his life, the Lord Jesus Christ. As our prayers will continue for his wife and his sons and loved ones, our hearts are broken with this temporary loss, but also filled with the joy of knowing that we will meet Ron in the presence of the Lord very soon. Ron Myers, you were loved. I love you, and we'll see you very soon.
we're going to read uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis, Galatians 6-7. Uh, I get, I'm doing Genesis studies online, so if I get that uh, mixed up in my brain, don't be shocked. But uh, from very familiar text, and uh, next week we're going to talk a little more in depth on the sowing and reaping um, aspect. But uh, this week we want to talk about something very important for this very paganized culture that we live in in America. And I'm just talking about the church. Yeah. And that is karma versus scripture. And so if you read uh, Galatians 6 7 with me, we'll take off from there and discuss this. Read that. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now that's a real uh, familiar verse to most of us, but you, a lot of times what you'll hear people do is equate that to the popular notion of karma. And in our last study, we left off talking about this truth about sowing and reaping. And we want to, in a moment, we're going to begin just unraveling the difference between this notion of karma and what the Bible teaches. But um, right after mentioning the fact that mankind thinks way too highly of men, we showed you this thing here. That's over in China. And you would be about you know, that tall. <laughs> it's massive. And I was just blown away by this thing. Well, uh, my research team, her name's Jenny. <laughs> uh -huh. um, she did a little research and found this. $650,000 was spent um, to build it. And it was being demolished. I was like, what in the what? It's just amazing. Now, that's what it looks like now. Tearing it down. Somebody didn't get proper permission from the government. You didn't oh. have The story says they didn't get the proper <laughs> permits. That's poetic justice. Let me tell you why. Mao Zedong is Mr. Communism. He inflicted government control on everybody and everything. And now his big stupid statue is getting torn down because of his government and the fact they didn't have permits. That is hilarious. As they would say in Galaxy Quest, Well, uh, uh. It's out in the middle of nowhere and they're probably thinking, why would we need permits for this? Yeah. <laughs> All good points, but considering communism, <laughs> there you go. Yes. Was it Ronald Reagan used to say the most uh, fearful words you can never hear is, I'm with the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> so Mao Zedong has met his eternal reward and even his legacy under communist China is one of dishonor and failure. No. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. <laughs> Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Mao Zedong is in a place called hell today. That's just a fact. And even his legacy, he is reaping what he has sown. It's an amazing thing. Um, I don't have to tell you this, but I'm going to remind you, God's word's true. Amen? Amen. Uh, Jenny likes to say, you can't beat that book. That's right. Amen. You can't beat it. Don't try. If that book says something and you want to go against it, you're going to lose. Amen. You will lose. Reminds me, my dad, you know, I remember when I was a kid, there was a few times I tried to beat, uh, first of all, I'll say this, I tried to beat the old man. <laughs> first of all, you don't call him old man. <laughs> And he says, you and me going head to head, and you will lose. Guess what? I lost. As we mentioned in our previous study, this is not karma, though. And I want you to understand this. Karma, according to Hinduism. Now, here's something that I just got to mention. It cracks me up. Americans think they know more about karma than the Hindus. And so when you talk to Americans, they will tell you what karma is, and they'll basically describe what the Bible teaches. And you try to tell them, that's not karma. And they're like, oh yeah it is. 
No, go find a Hindu and ask them. They'll tell you what you just described is not really karma. Why do I say that? According to the Hindus, the meaning of karma in simple terms is the law that suggests that a person's mental and physical actions are binding. In other words, it's, it's a, a cause and effect and it's a law. It can't do otherwise. Though our actions or inactions and our intention behind them are through. I said through our actions or inactions and our intention behind them. We bind ourselves to pakrita and cycle of births and deaths. You see that? If you claim to believe in karma, then you believe in reincarnation and death and birth cycles. If you don't believe in reincarnation and you don't believe in previous lives and deaths, you don't believe in karma because that's an integral part of what it is. Continues and says, um, broadly speaking, karma means not only actions but also the intentions and consequences associated with each action, including what you have supposedly done in your previous lives. I just got to say this, what's hilarious about reincarnation is you never meet anybody who says, yes, in a previous life I was a thief and a bum. And then before that I was a uh, very, very bad person who beat my wife. And before that, you know what I'm saying? They ne it's always, yes, in a previous life I was a princess. <laughs> yes, I was a princess. I don't have to come back as a boy or a girl. I, you can be either one. And in a previous life before that, I was married to a very wealthy man and I helped poor children. Aww. Yeah, so before that I was actually a man who was wealthy and my wife helped poor children. Yeah. That's, it's always the stories you hear about reincarnation. It's never, folks, uh, it's just, how do I say this? I want to be nice, try to be nice. You know, and it's hogwash. It's nonsense. You, you didn't live a life before this one you've got. We'll come back to that in a minute. Hindus will tell you, the people who actually made up the doctrine, <laughs> sometimes in spite of all the good work and sincere intentions, listen to this, we may reap negative consequences. See, that's not what the Bible teaches. A student may prepare uh, well for his exam but may fail. A very evil and wicked person may earn the jackpot or become owner of a successful business venture. Why is that? The theory of karma has a what they call a convincing explanation uh, such situations. The current events in our lives need not necessarily be determined by our previous actions in this very life, but also by the actions we did in our previous lives. That's karma. This explains why sometimes there's a disconnect between our actions and consequences, why bad people often seem to enjoy success and prosperity, while, while good people seem to suffer despite their best actions and intentions. You see, karma says that you in a previous life, if you're suffering now, you were probably a big old jerk. Yeah. And you're suffering for it now. Or if you're living it up, then in a previous life, you must have been wonderful. That's the teaching. That's not what the Bible teaches. That is pagan. That's pagan. That is that your life is simply a result of nature. Natural things. Choices and things you've made through many lives. It's pagan. I want you to focus in on this. The current events in our lives need not necessarily be determined by our previous actions in this very life, but also by the actions we did in our previous lives. I hope you're, uh, right now, being an Acts 1711 Christian, and you recognize that is a complete contradiction of Scripture. The Bible says, I want to say this, like Family Feud, the Bible says, we only have one life. Amen. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Mm -hmm. 
You're not coming back as a cow. Moo moo, big boy. <laughs> you are not coming back unless you're saved. And then when you come back, it's with Jesus and you're glorified. Amen. But you're still you. Yes. With a white horse. <laughs> That's a good part. <laughs> Read that with me. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. You get one shot. Karma is nonsense. We bind ourselves to Pakriti and cycle of births and deaths. Broadly speaking, karma means not only actions, but also the intentions and consequences associated with each action. Americans, including Christians, use the term karma and have no idea. Amen. They use that terminology and they have no idea. And you know, it's, it, you should, words mean things, and you should only use karma if you're not a Christian. Because karma is not a Christian doctrine. And I've had people argue with me over this. I, I don't argue back. I'm just like, you know what? I'm, just, I'm telling you the truth. Karma is not a Christian doctrine. You shouldn't credit satanic doctrines with what you're going through in life. It's God that we're dealing with. Karma is like Star Wars. May the Force be with you. You want to watch Star Wars? You want to enjoy the little lightsabers and, you know, the Jar Jar Binks <laughs> and all that? Fine. But you better understand George Lucas is trying to indoctrinate you with this nonsense. He's a Buddhist. He was raised Methodist. He's a Buddhist now. And he has pushed this stuff on people through his movies. The Force, if you watch closely, it's neither good or bad. And what the message is, that's why Darth turns out to be, well, Darth. The poor guy. You know, he got all eat up with, and burn up and not, you know, and he, He's Luke's dad. Sorry if you didn't already know that. Spoiler alert! <laughs> he's not a bad guy, but he's, he's a very necessary part of the yin and the yang. Good and evil. Two sides of the same coin. That's what they're trying to indoctrinate you with. It is anti-Christ ideology. So you can watch that stuff if you're discerning. But you know, too many Christians aren't discerning about that stuff. Here's, this is from a pro-karma website. Sometimes you have to walk away and let karma take over. Oh dear. Now, when you walk away, you're putting them in God's hands. Amen. Not some inanimate force is taking over. There is a God who's in control. But think of this, if the bad person lived a good life in a previous life, then karma will not necessarily result in bad for bad people. See that? According to karma, you got some bad person doing bad things and instead of you trying to make a difference, you just walk away and let karma take over. Well, what if that guy headed up the Salvation Army in the 19th century and fed a bunch of street people his whole life? He's going to get by with it according to karma. See that? You keep using that word karma. I do not believe that it means what you think it means. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, just... Galatians 6, 7 is not about karma. It's about, say the word, God. God. Don't you think it's a little bit offensive when God's people credit Karma, a satanic pagan doctrine for God's work? Christians have got to grow up and stop with the childish nonsense. Be not deceived. Karma will take care of it. No. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Karma is this inanimate force or law, and we are dealing with a living, eternal, holy God. 
It's not just God in the generic sense. We're talking about a living God. He is eternal. He is holy. He is the God of the Bible. He wants to know you personally. There's a problem with someone who claims to know God but credits karma. There's a problem with that. It's like saying, I love my wife, but I'm having sex with other people. Something wrong with that comment. I love God, but I'm committing spiritual fornication with pagan doctrine and ideology. Something wrong with that. Karma is narcissistic. You say, what's that word? In all honesty, it's psychobabble. <laughs> but it's a word in our vocabulary, so I'm going to use it. It says the main difference between the Eastern and Western religions is that in Islam and Christianity, watch this, this is unbelievable, but this is karma. You commit sin against the law of God. That's what we teach. Whereas, in Hinduism and related religions, you commit sin against yourself by your own actions. Karma makes you God. And when you commit wrong acts, it's only wrong if it's something that doesn't benefit your God, who is you. Karma is a part of the whole self-love, self-esteem, look in the mirror and adore thyself theology of the day. That's what it is. That's why when you go to self-help books, People say, oh, it's just self-help. It's not really bad. Those self-help books are full of pagan junk. They're not self-help. They're not just trying to help you better your life and such and such. You will find that they are filled with pagan doctrines. Karma makes you a god unto yourself, and now you're not sinning against a holy god. You're sinning against yourself. You are your god. Folks, Hopefully, as I'm saying this stuff, you're, you're, you're putting things together and what you're seeing out in our culture, in the education system, and in entertainment, and even in politics. How do I get elected? By telling you what you want to hear. We don't think about the better good of the whole country. We just think about what's better for me. Me, 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 me. That's the number one praise song in the nation. Me, 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 me. Karma is the underlying doctrine in today's New Age Babylon apostasy. That word is very important to learn. It means a falling away from the true faith. I am. Brother John tried to preach my message before I started, but he knew right where I was going. That's called discernment. God is the I am. Exodus 3.14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And He said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Don't ever claim to be I am. Amen. Jesus is God in human form, the I am. John 8.58, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I said to you, Before Abraham was, I am. I am. Folks, if Jesus Christ is not God, He's a blasphemer. Yep. Yep. The cults, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and many other pseudo-Christian religions claim that Jesus is and was not, is, is not and was not God. That is blasphemy. He is God manifest in the flesh if you have a King James Bible. If you have an NIV an English Standard Version, a New American Standard Version, a Living Bible, the Message, they rip that out. Look it up. 1 Timothy 3.16 says in the real Bible, God was manifest in the flesh. The New Versions take that out. There's a reason they're doing that. You and I are not I am. Say that with me. You and I are not I am. <laughs> you just confessed yourself to be a heretic among today's society. Get used to being called a heretic. Satan's lie in the garden, ye shall be as gods. Genesis 3, 5. 
You are I am. That's Satan's false gospel. And this false gospel that makes man the I am saturates our culture. It's in music, news, media, movie. Here's some examples I want to show you. You see, I am is God. Yeah. Reverend Ike. And whatever you add to I am, you become. Whatever you add to I am is added unto you. Did Listen you get it? Eat it up. I'm going to have you repeat it after me. I am is God. I am is God. He's this telling them they are the I am. This is secret. I want this segment to haunt you this week. I want you to answer that. I am what? Fill in the blank. I am the name of God. Your seven moves. Your flash of the air. I'm the great I am. Hear that? One more time. I'm the great I am. David Bowie. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I am. I am excited. It's Oprah. I am energized. special guest. He's been called the voice of hope, a pastor for a new generation. Houston's own Joel Osteen! Oh. Yeah. I, I, I love Pastor Joel. You know, a few months ago, I saw one of his sermons called I Am. And uh, I said, now that is a life class. And I instantly sent him a text because we text each other. <laughs> because he was basically teaching one of my all-time favorite life lessons, and that is, you become what you believe. But it was so simple. He said, it's called whatever follows I am is going to come looking for you. <laughs> He's preaching Ooh. karma. Did you, not get an, did you not have an aha just there? Well, God bless you. It's a joy to come into your homes. I want to talk to you today about the power of I am. What follows these two simple words will determine what kind of life you live. What would happen if we would be bold like David to say, I am amazing. I am wonderful. I am valuable. I am a masterpiece. I am a child of the Most High God. You talk like that and amazing comes chasing you. touch you with being, the being that Eckhart you are, Tolle is Oprah's new age guru. The I am, that is the essence of your identity when you remove all the identifications that usually you say, after you say I am, you say what you are. Mm -hmm. But if you say I am and add nothing to it, that is a good practice. It can get you in touch with the essence. I am not this, I am not that, I am. It's a simple meditation. Mm -hmm. Repeat the words, I am, to yourself. It's so powerful. I, I started to do that. It is so yes. powerful. And Welcome to the I Am Wishes Fulfilled Meditation. My name is Dr. Wayne. A solid King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station, available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.